Didn't get him. There, I got him. Some drag pulling this morning. I believe it's a hard mouth. Nope, just a spot. First fish, eh, a little pound and a halfer. I'll take it. All right, thanks for tuning in. As I do all summer, I'm gonna start off with the top water lure using the Spro E-Pop. I'm gonna try to show you throughout the day what I, what I look for. Um, Starting off, I'm just fishing between some docks here. Caught the last fish on a point. <coughs> There's a lot of areas that'll hold fish. The key is don't make it too complicated. Just start fishing. If you throw a top water around where you know there's some deep water nearby, you'll catch fish. There's a cold front or some kind of weather deal going on. So, very overcast, it's really windy. Don't know what that's going to do to the fish. That's a big one right there. big chunky spot that's two and a half and maybe three good fish a lot of times when you hook one like that you want to throw right back in where you just caught him a lot of times they'll feed in in groups or packs but just getting ready to leave this area Man, I love the top water fishing. It's very satisfying. You see these just riprap rocks? Always fish hanging around it. Anywhere on the lake. Actually, anywhere on any lake. It's a good place to fish. Monster. Look at that, that bluegill. I mean, he ate it too. <laughs> Little bluegill. He was hungry. So, if you've watched my channel, you've heard me say there's a there's a rhythm 
and a cadence to working these lures. It makes all the difference. But the key is every day you gotta have to figure out what they want. I usually work it fairly quick. And there's a certain sound I want it to make. If you can hear that bloop, that's the that's the sound you want. Bloop. Makes makes a lot of oh, there he is. <laughs> My lure just hit the water, didn't have to make any noise. He just just hit it. Come here, fish. Another little pound and a half. -er. Yeah, he's probably not even a pound and a half. Maybe a pound, if he's lucky. Well, I think I'm gonna continue on down this stretch. So there's nothing complicated to what I'm doing. I did wanna try a new lure. Brand new rod. Got a buddy of mine in Ohio who makes these lures. We've been going back and forth for a couple of years now, working on the design. So I'm gonna give this a shot for, for a minute. There he is. So I'll leave a link if you're interested in where you can get these lures. Hand, hand carved, custom made, custom painted. If you've got a certain color you want, he can do it. That's a little one, but man, they're beautiful. Just to show you his his paint jobs are really nice, hand painted. So the one thing this area has is, is a steep dropping bank, almost bluff wall kind of situation, which is whether I'm fishing top water like this or I'm fishing deep, I'm looking for those bluff walls. It really is as simple as coming out here and throwing a topwater lure. It's not it's not not difficult. Ooh, this is a good this is a good fish. I don't want to lose it. I don't have it hooked very well. Gotcha. another stud that's probably two and a half three pounds I apologize for all the huffing and puffing on my videos 
unfortunately I'm still experiencing problems with my lungs from getting sick earlier in the year still got this ridiculous thing I'm wearing on my leg is compression sleeve because I still got blood clot so anyway that's that's a health update not great the osprey are out there fishing this morning kind of cool camera <laughs> my camera's all moving around on me Another one, not big, but spit him up a little bluegill. That fish, that fish has been eating bluegills. Sometimes there's so much bait in an area that it makes it very tough to catch a fish, which is what I think I was running into there. Any area where you got trees hanging over the, t the water is usually a good spot, especially when it drops off deep like it does here. Like I said, we got a cold front, so everything is really kind of shut down. You can always catch a few though, but I'm about ready to head in. Had to, had to resort to throw on a worm to catch them. The fishing is kind of... We've got a cold front coming through. Fishing is kind of slow. But I've made a new color of worm here that I, I want to try. So it's actually kind of cool. July in, in Georgia it's, it's not bad it's kind of cool wasn't expecting that So my new color, new color worm works. <laughs> They're not giants, but man, on a cold front day like today, I'll take them. <laughs> Boy, that fish hammered it too. Normally this time of year, you'd have to go deep. I'm catching these fish right up shallow. The wind's blowing in on this on these rocks here. It just pays to experiment a little. You never know where they're going to be. I'm just using a Texas rig worm. That's that's the color. 
I'm using. This almost took my worm. pound and a half. Well, this lets me know that my new color works. Took me a little bit to figure them out. Cold front's got them pretty slow. But I'm just Texas rigging a worm. Got wind blowing in over here against these rocks. A worm will always catch you a few fish on any lake that's got bass. There's a certain population of bass that stay shallow all year long. You just have to find the areas that they're in. Most of the fish are going to be deep this time of year. Except for, you know, late at night, early in the morning. They'll come in shallow to feed. All right, thanks for tuning in. Um, took me a while to figure them out today, but the old worm, uh, Texas rig worm, will always catch a fish or two. Um, I switched between a couple of different topwater lures today. Caught a couple on this. This lure here is made by a friend of mine in, in Ohio. I will leave a his information in the description on the video. The trusty Spro Epop did the rest of the damage on the top water. It's a, it was an odd day today, kind of cool out uh, for middle of July in, in, in Georgia. That's strange. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Come back and fish with me next time.